Okay. Uh, so shall we call the meeting to order? Sure. Okay. Um, Judy, thank you for your minutes. Uh, any, anybody have anything to say other than moving exception? Look nope. good to me. Except is, except, okay. Uh, okay, Susan, you you made a motion. Yes, I move to move to accept the minutes. Okay, I'll second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Good. Aye. Aye. Okay, so we were going to talk a little bit about where things stood um, regarding the pending CPA grant to the church. Uh, Judy, do you want to do that? Do you want to talk? Do you want me to talk? How do you want to do this? Why don't you talk? Because I don't remember where things were last time. Okay. Here. So, um, well, I believe that since this group last met, the um, conversations among Brian Domina and the town council and the CPC continued. And we have, the CPC asked that, um, in addition to putting in place a grant agreement, which has never happened before, um, that two conditions be applied, uh, both with a 20 year limit. One is the right to first refusal for the town, which we had recommended you know, whenever in June, <laughs> no, a while ago. And the other would be a condition whereby, regardless of uh, who owns the church at the time, if the, if the windows are removed or changed in a way that deviates from the secretary's standards for historic uh, preservation that the grant would have to be repaid. So that would be uh, made a deed restriction. Um, it got slightly complicated because um, when the warrants were posted, that repayment condition somehow in town offices fell off the table. So Judy, I think where we are um, is that you and I have each sent suggested alternate wording to Brian who may be con you know, confused by this, you making it better than I had uh, tried the first time. And I, I was actually planning to check in with him tomorrow since I, don't, I haven't had the sense Alan Sanderson is going to do that. Have you? No. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so someone will have the to issue propose. Is, the issue is how to, how to word the warrant. Right, so that, right. It, it's, so it's that just, the, right things, the right things get recorded and the right, right things are included. Oh, oh, sorry. I forgot that there was a, a final step, which is that when the finance committee met last week, this is all sort of procedural stuff. None of it is contentious. Um, and unlike the past few years, decided to vote on this CPA uh, article, um, they requested that um, the warrant say explicitly that this 20 year condition be recorded at the Franklin County Registry of Deeds. There was some back and forth about, well, where else would it be recorded? But and, it, <laughs> and because the warrants seem to be written as one long continuous string of <laughs> phrases, you know, it's it's a little awkward to get it all in there. But I, I'll check in with Brian next week. And the vote is next. The special town meeting is next Tuesday night at seven thirty, the 29th. And it would be great if, if we could all get there and vote. I don't. You know, sometimes there are eight people at these special town meetings. Next Thursday, Tuesday, Tuesday the 29th. Tuesday 29th. Yeah. yeah, I can't. I'm teaching that night, I'm afraid. Yeah, I think there will be one or two church people there. Good, good. Okay. More than um, one or two. Don't think and I can the, make it that night. The other, the other warrants are two very small sums of money that are kind of cleaning up some stuff at the library. And some technical warrants about where money, should we ever actually get money from the cannabis sales process would be parked in a way that would make most sense for the town. It's 
pretty simple overall. There's something about a cruiser? Oh, yes, 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 sorry, sorry. How could I forget? Got the wheels. Was, it's not the wheels. It's that after incredible, I wasn't involved in any of this, but very lengthy discussions, I gather, at the select board about whether the police department would be required to buy a hybrid cruiser um, rather than a gas gasoline driven cruiser. Uh, the town voted the money for a hybrid cruiser, but by the time the police chief ordered the cruiser, the 2022 model was no more. There are no more. And the 2023 model costs seven or $8,000 more. That's the last thing. That's gonna be hard to keep up with, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. The discussion, the voting, and then Ooh. another price change. Right, 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 right. So I, I guess think they have to order and you just have to fund it now. I guess they need to they need to decide to buy a 2025 model and then they'll be right. ready. <laughs> right. That's weird. The, the company, I've forgotten whether it was GM or Ford, they just canceled all these orders. Well Maybe. they canceled it, well, they canceled it for a reason. They canceled it because in the what is was named the Inflation Reduction Act the requirement for the to get credits for buying electric vehicles required that certain parts maybe it's the chips be made in the us and ford Everything realized they, they couldn't get enough of chips yeah. made in the us in time to continue the 2022 models i mean i had actually read about that in the newspaper yeah. but i didn't i didn't connect it to our police <laughs> vehicle <laughs> so yes it would be good to get out in front of that so, um, so that's where we are with the grant to the church. Um, okay. And there was an article in the Greenfield Recorder, which Judy sent around. Did you send it around to everyone in this committee? Uh, I know? sent it to the CPC. I don't send it yeah. to us. Um, there was not anything in the Gazette today, at least. But, you know, sometimes there's a and lot. And he hasn't corrected it online either. Did he, just, he did, read he, it. did he just did he just invent your saying that or misunderstand something you said? Well, I the, the issue is that it says that if if these are installed, the church will get fifteen thousand dollars in a year in energy cost savings. Um, that would be quite. A, that would mean that your bills were quite high to start with. Well, <laughs> that our total budget is sixty thousand dollars a year. Um, that would be. A little, but um, so I told him that that we had talked, and the fifteen thousand was the estimate that was in the application for the storms. And when we were talking, um, the photographer was there, and it was a disjointed conversation. And and he asked why we were wanting storms if there was double pane glass. And I said, well, partly for energy savings and partly, obviously, for protecting the glazing and the wood. And um, and I think Chris just got confused. His notes probably said 15,000 in energy. And he, he told me in the email that he must have misread the application. But I think I think he just wrote it very quickly. Okay. But it was nice of them to come. And, mm -hmm. They spent they spent easily 45 minutes there. Freezing. <laughs> so so that's where we are with this special round. Um, and then the deadline for the the usual <laughs> um, round of CPA proposals is the beginning of December and um, QuantQuant has sent their application to us first, um, as, as Judy did with the church. So, uh, Allison, would you be willing just to talk for a couple of minutes about it? I'm sure people have read it, but just. Certainly, uh, it's gonna be hard for me to take notes and type and, and talk at the same time. I can only do one of those. I think um, the notes can say that you talked about the project. I will talk. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so this is this is a proposal to, for funds to help restore, repair, restore, and stabilize uh, the ceramic silo that I think most of you have seen that is at the entrance to what we call the event barn at the farm. There are two other ceramic silos on the property there at, that are on the east end of the dairy barn. And uh, we have just completed work on both of those um, last year and the year before. And I sent you some pictures at the end of that document show uh, the masons and the carpenters doing that work. But that leaves the third silo, which is the one on the, um, uh, sorry, somebody say something. Okay, that leaves the third silo that's on the event barn that is in desperate need of repair. The tiles themselves um, are getting wet because of the damaged, or uh, you know, aging damaged roof, and water gets in there and things start cracking, and um, many of the tiles have cracked. And at some point, if that is left, you know, long enough, the thing will fall down. Uh, so it needs to be addressed before we get close to that situation. And um, there's some costs in here for doing that. It's a two-part uh, project. The roof needs to be fixed. I think that's the, the first part that would be done, um, re-roofed. And then the, the, the specialty masons would come in and do what they did for the other silos, which is to they essentially remove all the grout from between all of the tiles, which amount to, I forget how many thousands of tiles that is, but many tiles. Replace that with, um, I'm going to forget the word they use, but appropriate grout that can expand and contract and take the weather a little better. Replace uh, tiles where they need replacing, and when we don't have tiles to replace, they're looking at either a uh, a, mo a contemporary ceramic block or brick to replace what is needed. And that would have to happen this, <clears throat> we plan to have this happen this year, or I'm sorry, 2023, this coming year. Um, is that clear? Very. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Um, I can tell you the history, the history background of it, which um, is also, would you like to hear that part? Has yeah. everyone, has everyone read the proposal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think okay. 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 Um, so discussion. Allison, have, have you read the Secretary's Standards for Masonry Repair? There, no. There, there is a, such a document. I, I'd love to read it. Yeah, if, I'm sure if you Google Secretary, there's the National, they're under the National Park Service and there's a long list of windows, what masonry. Wait, what, but what am I Googling, Judy? Secretary of the Interior Standards. Uh, well, I have the I have the entire thing saved on my computer. You know, the whole thing. Oh, okay. Um, well, there is one for masonry. I just remember that be we, interesting to read. Yeah, and I remember that Mass Historical Commission was very very concerned about the mortar that was used on the chimney repairs at Town Hall. And you just said appropriate, and I'm sure- They had a term for it, which I, is escaping me right now, yeah. uh, but they're but very aware of that. Um, well, and they, and they say in their bid something improper cementitious, is that the word you're- what, There you go, you? yes, that might be it. <laughs> Quite a word, uh, masonry is contributing to the deterioration of the tiles. Yeah. How did you find these people? And, and where, oh, they're in Amherst. I think they're in Ashfield. Uh, they were, it was word, a word of mouth thing. Um, someone Ann knew, knew somebody who had some work done. Was it Bruce Brown? 
Yeah, it was it was definitely word of mouth thing. And and I think she talked to a couple of people before she found these guys who felt confident and had some experience working with this stuff. Well, and wanted to, wanted to take it on. It's not it's not uh, it's sort of an unusual. You couldn't have a business repairing ceramic silos, you know, here in the valley. You wouldn't you wouldn't have a lot of jobs. Right. Right. Are these the same people who did the previous two? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. So th th we found them to be really great to work with and super competent. And um, those two silos look fabulous. And uh, we have every confidence they'll do a great job on this third silo. Was CPA funds used for the two that were done or did? No, 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 those were, we did those ourselves. Okay. No, the I can say it didn't occur to us to even think about that. I didn't know that that was even an option. I've only been on this committee for, I don't know what, not, not very long. And um, until that church application came up, it didn't even occur to me about private entities um, applying for funds. Mm -hmm. and, and I should maybe um, just to go back to the discussion at the finance committee last week, which is pertinent to this. Um, when, um, when we came to the warrant, one member of the committee said, um, why would we be using town money? You know, he said, how many members does that church have? 30, you know, he actually said 30. Um, and, uh, why would we be giving money to benefit 30 people? You know, what does that have to do with the public good? And I um, explained the process that this commission had gone through by refining and um, making more specific the criteria for an application from a private entity, and then talked a little bit about what they were looking at, but um, the, the conditions that the CPC had um, wished to put on it. And my answer to his, what does this have to do with public good was, and again, this was not contentious. It was a conversation was, well, it has to do with the fact that it's in the National Historic District and it's one of the defining buildings of the town and its architecture matches the town hall and it is in the best interest of the town from an historic preservation point of view to keep the facade of the church looking um, authentic. Mm -hmm. I don't think I use the word authentic, I'm not quoting myself, but, um, and then, then the vote, but there was no more discussion, the vote was except for this business of uh, expanding the warrant. Um, so Susan, the answer to your question is there is no history. <laughs> the history will be <laughs> next Tuesday, you know, when, when uh, I suppose if the town approves a, an historic preservation grant to a private entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was just thinking it, it makes it makes a strong case if we can if we can say as we've done in the past. But you're right; we've only just started looking at non-public buildings. I just wanted to clarify. The thing I might add for you to consider. For, for what it's worth, for the historic commission to consider, is that this farm is, is something of a kind of keystone species in this town in terms of agricultural history and just general history. And yes, it is a business. We employ people, we employ a lot of local people, but it's a business that at its foundation was conceived in an effort to conserve this property, maintain its agricultural function, and make the most of the history that is involved in it. We're not, if we were simply here to make as much money as we could, if that was the goal, this would not be what we're doing. <laughs> we didn't come, we didn't come here, you know, uh, Ann and I, let's say, we didn't come out of college saying, I know what I want to be. I want to be an event planner and I want to have weddings. Let's find a place we can do that. 
that's not how it happened. The wedding and event business came as an effort to try to support the agriculture business, which is, which could honestly could not support itself. Mm -hmm. And so those two things are wedded in a way that makes sense to us. And we're really careful about um, the event busy business, not compromising the agriculture business and instead celebrating it and supporting it. And so it's, it, it, it's, it's a business. Yes, but it, it, but it has some foundation to it that I think is not like, you know, uh, a candle factory or a hamburger restaurant. The other thought that occurred to me, um, how, do, how do I say this? That while it is privately owned, it is publicly accessible. So residents of the community and visitors to the community can enjoy the property blueberry picking, apple picking, going to events there, that I could see an argument being made that it's a private entity doing a public service. Well, it's a private entity that also pays taxes in this town. So that does separate it from the church mm -hmm. that, that, that might cast a little different light on things. So we pay considerable taxes to the town. And um, we are publicly accessible when during open hours, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah. we also have an accessibility, you know, it's, this is worth considering, a, a, a virtual accessibility. We have a significant online presence through our website and through our various social media so that you could experience, and many people do, Quant Quant Farm without even living in this time zone. And through the Facebook page that I manage, for example, are we have 7,000 plus uh, followers. They hear all about not just local Waitley stuff and you know what apples are for sale, but they hear about the barn being restored and what is a ceramic silo and where where the hell is Waitley? Mm -hmm. And you know all of those things um, every day. You know, so so that is it's in my mind, that's a sort of 21st century accessibility presence that exists. Mm -hmm. Bear uh, with I, you, you all have to come sorry. on a field trip with me across the kitchen because I have a cake in the oven. Okay. <laughs> um, that's funny. We have guests showing up in a couple hours, so I have right. to multitask. Susan probably so going to knit Susan, and bake Susan, at the same time. Uh -huh. Susan has probably created the regional absence of whipping cream that I confronted today. <laughs> this is I not bet she makes her own. She, she probably does. Oh. Um, I, I would also, um, I, I also have been thinking about barns in this town. Um, Allison and I were just crawling all through and photographing the one at 220 Long Plain Road, which is Mm -hmm. is going to be taken down. And as you will remember, we previously did the same at the gorgeous hillside um, dairy barn. And, and thinking, you know, part of this town's history is 11 dairy farms contracted to one. And Quant Quant was one that was both important as a dairy, but also really significant from an architectural point of view, because it is distinct, because there are no, I mean, did, didn't you tell me, Allison, that the next closest barn is one at- um, That uh, I know of, I, I, I wish I could look up ceramics, you know, silos.com and yeah, find them yeah. all in the world, but there is no such thing. If anybody knows of one, I'd love to hear about it. But the closest one that I've seen is the one at Hall Tavern up in Shelburne, right on uh, Jay Healy's place up on uh, Route 2. That's the one I know of. And then I sent you a page from, I just stumbled over this one in Falmouth, Judy. Do you right. know that one? No, uh, I that, almost never get to Falmouth. No, I didn't know if you might've been by, but um, no. obviously a project that they took on, sort of odd because it's just a silo without a barn or a farm, but they felt like that was uh, something worth preserving. Okay. Would you call him? Um. You know, I think we need to remember that all the APRs and the conservation restrictions go to 
private individuals and yes or the money they the do. money they goes. Do. the money does and and even with the Waitley center woods project it, well the conservation went, project the money went to build out she yeah know, and who, who sold it to kestrel and it's recognized that 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 happens but there is the town has identified a public good you're preserving the agriculture you're you're preserving the open space but it's a private and in, and in that case it goes to a single individual typically i mean maybe a family but um so this is not unique <laughs> what we've had to do what's unique is that you don't necessarily have a preservation restriction along with it so and it's not a consistent public good. You have to, each of these historic ones kind of have to identify the public good. I think the, the Kwankwan application did a great job of that. Um, and I, I don't think we should be too hung up on it, actually. I mean, I, it, people, private, private properties get CPA funding all the time, whether it's APRs or or historic preservation money. I think I, I mean you're right, and I think you know we are a very small um, CPA program, not the very smallest, but we're certainly one of the smallest. So we simply haven't had the volume of applications that a lot of other towns have that have millions of dollars to give away each year. Um, either on their own. So it, it kind of, and, and of course our historic preservation money for a while was, I mean, was really being saved and then used for town hall. Um, so I, yes, there's nothing illegitimate <laughs> at all about this proposal. Um, Judy, uh, you, you raised the secretary standards and I'm embarrassed that I, I hadn't actually thought of that and I should have because I looked at the write-up um, from historic, uh, what is their name, Galvin and Sons, and decided in a kind of unprofessional way that they sounded like they knew what they were doing. Do you think we should pause and look at those to be sure before we, um, before the Historical Commission um, endorses or considers endorsing the proposal? Um, I guess I, Judy brought it up. I'm really asking everybody. <laughs> you know. I can't speak for anybody else, but I don't know that I would know what I was looking at because I'm not an expert in that area to know if they fund fundamentally make sense. What I remember is that the the materials, the, the whatever is being held together by the mortar, whether it's style or stone or brick or whatever, um, should be as authentically historical as possible. And it sounds as though that's the case here. The other issue is that the mortar should expand and contract at the same rate as what's being held in place and not be strong. Evidently, a lot of contemporary mortars are stronger than the old bricks. And that's so how they, it was explained to me. They're actually and they pull it, they pull it too apart. rigid. They're too yeah. rigid. Yeah, yeah right. they're too rigid. So it sounds to me as though, as though these people have it down. I just wanted to make sure, which is why I brought it up. Um, masonry is hopefully on page one <laughs> <laughs> of the 7,000 page document. <laughs> wow. Um, it isn't really 7,000, but it's very long. Um, well, I, I think well, that's a that's a question I'd be happy to ask these guys if they're familiar with. I, I expect that they are. But if that is something that you feel like I should inquire about, I can do that. Well, we, we are we are literally required. I mean, star preservation grants, uh, CPA grants must comply with the Secretary of the Interior standards. Um, and I think that means not only the mortar, but that to the extent that it's possible to replicate the tiles 
you should try very hard to do that. Well, that's right. and that's what we want, you know. Yeah, right. I understand that. Right. And right. I think our vote, our vote should reflect that. We have to decide first if this property is is eligible because it's not in the historic preservation district. Mm -hmm. but I, would I, move, I would move that it is. Yeah, I think, and and we decided uh, this summer that um, that any building that is on Macris would be eligible. I mean, we didn't limit would it. Would be we eligible eliminate. for consideration, but not be eligible for consideration. Right. right, 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 exactly. I, but yeah. I think um, I think we have to find that it's eligible for funding. Which um, do can we revisit what our standards were for that? Although you know, it's obviously a you know a historic and importantly historic property in the town. Well, I've, we had three or four criteria. I don't in my them. in my written um, piece there, those are those three sections are the criteria. And this is what started making bells ring in my head was when we were reviewing these criteria, um, I, it suddenly occurred to me that that our project met all of them. And it had to do with, I'm just flipping back and forth between documents here. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, that's what I'm doing too. Uh, historical significance, demonstrable public good, and that the organization or the entity exhibited commitment to preservation. Is that right, Donna? Mm -hmm. The three that I... Yeah, yeah it is. So I that's am... why I wrote these, the, the, these responses was to those criteria. Right, I'm, I'm going back through our minutes and this is why I really am happier. Right. Yes, that's exactly what we decided. And and the, the we expanded the definition of historic significance as determined by this group with some examples. We said this may be because the entity played an important role in Waitley's history. I think Quan Quan mm -hmm. meets that criterion. Mm -hmm. The entity is an excellent example of an architectural style. Mm -hmm. I think it meets that one. The landscape is, is an important one in Waitley and or illustrates an important aspect of Waitley's history. Mm -hmm. The, well, and the last one is about objects. So it's, it's the same point. Yeah, I mean, it seems to hit all of the, uh, the main points. Yeah, I agree. I, I do wonder, and this may not be so much ours, but in the future, it, it sounds like all of the funding that's requested will be all the funding that's required is there, is there no um, money provided by quant quant or is that well i mean it depends this well this is a question for you guys cuz cuz i could see structuring this more than one way but the way i've presented it here is that we have three silos we've already paid to fix two of them yeah. at a pretty good price tag and we have this third one that is attached to the building for which we won the historic preservation award um, and and uh, it's a two part thing uh, with the roof costing six or so thousand dollars, which we are willing to do that part. Uh, but we are, as this is worded, applying for the money for the masonry. Okay. If you feel strongly that this should be constructed some other way, that's. No, I, I had missed that point. So some of this money is actually could be provided by Quan Quat itself, other than all of it being provided by the town, the CPA money. Is that That's a fairly right? good chunk there? Well, it depends if you think of yeah. this as one big project or or the third well, phase even, of a three-part project or a second phase of a two-part project. I, I wasn't sure sort of how to present that. Well, even the six thousand on its own is is more than ten percent of the total, which is not trivial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of the of the total of of the fifty five, uh, the total of right, the total of the one third of the overall project. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because personally, I don't. You know, the 
the massive amount spent for the first two phases is commendable and demonstrates a commitment to preservation, which you already show in other ways, but I don't really think we could think about it for this funding round, but. Well, no, and, say, it's, and it's done, you know, so. It, yeah. So. yeah, but so I think you presented it very well. And, 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 and I mean, this is a good thing to talk about, but it's more likely to come up at, it, when it is discussed by the Community Preservation Committee. Because at that point, yeah. it will be discussed, you know, in the context of other proposals that have been submitted in this round. And there'll be a certain amount of how much money do we have to give away. Um, I should is have that said a known, that. Is that a known thing, no, Donna? Do they? Uh, well, I we know that the library is planning to submit an historic preservation proposal for the portico and the steps. Um, I don't know what, I, that's all I, I mean, those words are what I know. And I sent some guidelines to Bob Smith, who's the chair of the board and who said um, that he'd like to, that they would like to come and talk to this group at our December meeting. I mean, I, I gave him, I gave him this date and the December date. Okay. <laughs> the December one there is, there is no, because they hadn't put it together yet. <laughs> if the church gets the funding at town meeting, then they will use up the historic preservation bucket for the year. So what the remaining proposals would be competing for what's called unallocated funds, of I which there's, that there's that a parish that. amount. But, but what so we that, don't know at this point is what the total of the all the other proposals would be, right? I and, that, heard. and that and that historic preservation budget is not a, a limit. It's not. It, it's simply no. that we're required to set aside. Is it fifteen percent of the total each year? Ten. Ten. Ten to for historic preservation for open space and for for affordable housing. But then there is the rest of the money, which can go for any any project. Um, and the stuff that saved up from previous years. Right, right. Um, so the only other, I mean, I've heard of a couple of other possible proposals, but we won't really know till December 13th because most applicants produce their proposal one minute before the deadline. <laughs> um, so, um, so I have just scanned the secretary's standards about masonry, and it looks fine to me. But <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's a general. I mean, it's what you, what we've already been talking about. Don't do something that will make the problem worse. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. And and keep keep the original materials to the greatest extent possible. Um, but I do think um, you you might want to assuming if you're willing to do a little bit of um, amendment before the formal submission to the CP, to the CPC, just check them and, and make a reference to them. I think sure. that, would okay. just, that would be wise. I'd suggest also include a couple of photos of the old dairy. I, of, of the, well, I, I did old photos of this silo and its barn, but I, yeah. you mean bigger property? Oh, cows. Oh, cows. Okay. Cows, <laughs> cows, everybody yes. likes cows. Cows, cows okay. and, and <laughs> workers. And, uh, uh, okay. Um, we do have well, all that. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I mean, we don't okay. want, we don't want this to be, um, I'm going to say, uh, I mean, I think the worst case scenario would be that this is somehow conceived as something that the, the wedding planners need. You know, it's it's a much larger context. Um, okay. And it's great it's great to give the macros uh, entry, but I uh, my observation from other proposals is that the more you can get the actual meat of the content into a single document, a, a lot of people just don't ever read the other attachments. I didn't know if they see these all the time or not. No. 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 No, I mean, this is already much more proposal than is 
sometimes submitted. So um, what what's the sense of the committee? Are we ready to, to take a vote on our support for this proposal? Do we? I would be. Or not? I am. I am. Sure. OK, um, Allison, I think you need not you need recuse yourself. You knew that. <laughs> <laughs> abstain, um, abstain, 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 recuse. Recuse, you, you and I just had an exchange about the difference between abstention and recusal. <laughs> you think recusal? Or, uh, never mind. I think recusal <laughs> means you either don't you don't participate in the meeting at all. It sounds like it's a question here and it says you. When, yes. when you're presenting the application, that's a little hard. Yeah. Um, okay, so may I have a motion? I move that we recommend this uh, application for funding with the conditions that um, it's consistent with the Secretary of the Interior standards and that a grant agreement is, is uh, proposed, is submitted. And I don't know if we need to do a payback or not. I think that's really the CPC that would decide yeah. that anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I, I, yeah, same with the grant agreement. That's not our purview, sorry. That's okay. Secretary's, secretary's conditions. <laughs> Just leave it at the secretary's standards. Yeah. yeah. Um, second. I, have a second. I second it. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Great. Good luck with it. It's yeah. Neat thing. That'll be interesting. Excellent. Well, thank you for reading about it and talking about it. And I appreciate your input because it's a I wasn't sure how much to do or, you know. What else? No, I think you hit it very well. Just a little more nostalgia. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> sure. Okay. I know exactly which photograph. <laughs> well, where you know it is one of the things we're very fortunate uh, of here is that because this you know was such a a big deal place, and the owner was very proud. Um, they had photographers in here all the time taking pictures of, and, and they did advertising. So they were advertising in Holstein Frisian magazine, which I'm sure you all still get. Oh, yeah. um, but but yeah, so they were taking photos quite a bit, and and thanks to the historical society and and some other sources, we we have quite a bit of those photos. It could have been the you know could have been not. Like, I don't think, I, I, have we ever seen many photos of the Hillside Dairy in the collection? Yeah, there are quite a few, but they came, few? they came because the Baronesses had a huge scrapbook and they brought okay. it over okay. and I scanned a bunch of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and the, and, um, and the Sanderson's, Alan um, produced a number of photographs from Fairview Farms, but they were later. They were later than yours. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Alan and Brad are little kids, in, so that wasn't that long. That was in the fifties. No, you know, Quonquant was one of a um, series of. This is going to sound bad, but like gentleman farms, where where people who who had some money really wanted to be at the forefront of of the science of dairy. And they took it very, very seriously. And, they and this was this was Oxley Wells, Frederick Frederick Oxley Wells. Frederick F U Wells. They don't name them like that anymore. So F U no. Wells. Yes. yes. Frederick Utley Wells, and he's a Waitley Utley. born kid. Yeah. He went um, off to Springfield and made his money in the in the laundry linen business, and then lived in Long Meadow and continued to live in Long Meadow even after they started the farm. This They often refer to this as the summer place. Weston had two two dairies like this. And, and the story was very, very similar. You know, people who 
made their money and then came back and were going to do good for, for the world. You know, they, they really tried to. Well, and save to, New England farms in the 20s. You know, those were starting even then to go into yeah. a certain kind of decline. And, and there uh, was this, this fear about tuberculosis, about disease with milk. Exactly. And they wanted to fix that. And and did you know it was my great grandfather was the vet here? No. Yeah. No, that's yeah. really nice. Augustus, Augustus Cleves was a vet, a livestock vet out of Gardner, Mass. And Quanquant was one of his customers. And he was involved in the TB uh, inoculation process. And you see his name come up in, in some of the articles and stuff about it. Oh, that's so my uncle, who is now dead, remembers coming as a child, getting in the car, you know, in whatever car you got into in 1938 and driving all day. He said it took to get from Gardner to Waitley so that he that grandpa could come and uh, take care of the cows here. That's great. Cool. I was going to say I was going to say more on the cynical side that. The gentlemen farmers were a bit the way Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates each buy half of the state of Montana now. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a, and there's a second echo to it's that story. It's just a scale because, thing. It is just a scale. <laughs> well, don't forget Hoxie. You know, when he right. began the orchard business, he had already right. had his career at Dow. And right. so that makes him sort of a, a gentleman coming back, taking over the property. And he wanted to be in the apple, you know, the orchard business. So there's yeah. that sort of a, it yeah. happened again. Yeah, I remember him. And you could say that's sort of what's happening again now. But so there, it is a recurring theme. Right, right. So, um, so this uh, this is good. So um, I'll let Alan know that this is coming because he and and you'll <laughs> submit it. To, you know, you submitted to, to uh, Amy Schrader, the town clerk. Okay. Uh, which you can do electronically. Um, and someone from Quan Quan should, well, after the, after the CPC meets in December, then Judy or I will let you know when that group would like to meet with someone from um, okay. Okay. And it occurs to me you might want to offer to do a little show and tell on site. That might be. What month are we talking about? January. January or February. <laughs> that'll be that'll be lovely. Okay. It'll be very brief. It'll yeah, be sure. very brief, brief show. <laughs> well and done. Tell. Now good. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, maybe everybody will have been there, but you, you know. Certainly. Know. Well, that I, we'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, good. Um, do we have other business? No. no. Oh, yeah. Wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Enjoy. Even if Susan has bought up all the whipping cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Fun. Our next meeting is... Set. Uh, I'm sorry, I had that in front of me, and I will again uh, for December 19th at 5 p.m. Okay. Okay. I guess I should say just very briefly, you know, at this point, we have the option to be meeting in person, but if we do that, we still would have to have someone holding a phone or an iPad and making it the meeting available by Zoom. Um, and therefore, which sounds to me like a headache. <laughs> so even, if have, we're all, even if we're all present in person, we still have to pretend there's a- Because our meetings are public. Here. Because our meetings are public. I see. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. So I- convenient. I-, I but, even though I like meeting in person, I've decided that until this, I, I don't really want to talk about it until or unless the state relaxes that requirement. But I, I, do others feel the same way? I'm yes. happy meeting, you know, meeting via Zoom for the time being. Yeah, Zoom is fine. It's more convenient in many ways. I'd have a hard time traveling right now. So. Oh, right. Of course. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, I could, could, I could, could be on Zoom anyway. So. Time. Okay. I think if, we, if they require us to meet in person and still maintain Zoom, which I think might be likely starting in April, I think we should meet down at town hall where they have town offices where they have the equipment. Yeah, to do, it, it, to it, do the problem. Right. The challenge is that there are often now several committees meeting at the same time and they have yeah. only the one facility. So, yeah. um, well, if everyone's happy doing it this way, let's just keep assuming we're going to do it this way until we're told. Well, especially to do something different. in the wintertime when it's dark and <laughs> it's cold. So, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, then, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. You yep. too. You too. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.